Hey guys, Samsung set the wheels in motion with the foldable phone revolution, but has it reached its peak and has the innovation dried up? In some ways it's definitely slowed down, and in others it's just getting started. We were lucky enough to attend a recent media event where Samsung pulled back the curtain on their latest creations, including tablets, watches, as well as the new foldables, the Z Flip 5 and Z Fold 5. While we're still waiting for our review samples, we do have some things to share from what we saw. Let's start with the Z Flip 5, that has probably the most noticeable change out of all of them, the new Flex window, now boasting a 3.4 inch display complete with the funky corner design. This actually is a great improvement. Back when we first checked out the prior Z Flip, our major gripe was the need to constantly flip it open to use it. The smaller display was only good enough for providing general information and notifications. Now you have a small but pretty feature rich display, where you can not only use a bunch of widgets, but also manage notifications and have a full QWERTY keyboard. The screen is now large enough to swipe down for quick settings like Wi-Fi, mobile data or sound. You can even swipe up to process payments. Other improvements seem to be doubled minimal storage at the same price and the new processor. It is now using Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, which is also shared with the Z Fold, as is expected with every new model. But let's not forget different colors as well as new cases. In many ways, Z Flip seems to have truly positioned itself as a trendsetter, catering to users who crave personal touch to their devices, and Samsung is certainly happy to capitalize on it. Overall, I can see how these seemingly subtle enhancements to the front screen, coupled with the overall performance boost, could drive many more people to jump onto the foldable bandwagon, which leads us well to the Fold 5. Naturally, right out of the get-go, there was a lot of focus on productivity. The new advanced taskbar is a game-changer, comfortably accommodating up to four recent apps. During the presentation, Samsung placed a heavily emphasis on the two-handed drag-and-drop functionality. I can see the utility there, but personally I see myself mastering the one-hand hold of a hand drag-and-drop kind of approach, but there is still a lot of room to speed up my workflow. The screen form factor and multi-window control is obviously pretty amazing. Another noteworthy upgrade is the Fold S Pen, which though still is an optional accessory, is now 41% slimmer than compared to the one from the Fold 4. However, my S22 Ultra S Pen is even smaller, so I'm not sure I can chalk it up as a victory for the Fold 5. We also had the chance to tinker with the new case that comes with the S Pen holder. While it does make the phone larger, it also resolves the wobble problem. Due to the large camera bump, the phone is somewhat unpleasant to use on a desk, unless you fold it and place it on the other side. We tested Z Flip on this one as well, and it feels more stable, just with a slight wobble when really challenged. On the positive side, they've managed to shave off about 10 grams if compared to the Fold 4, making it lighter than its predecessor, and arguably slimmer. The slimming claim though, it gets a bit murky when you delve into the little fine print from the presentation. They put an asterisk saying, I quote, Thickness of a Galaxy Z Fold 4 is measured based on the metal parts between the hinge, while Galaxy Z Fold 5 is measured based on the glass parts between the hinge. That's a bit of a weird head scratcher, isn't it? One area where both devices definitely shine is the gap when folded, or rather the lack thereof. This is due to the simplified and upgraded hinge mechanism. Both the Z Flip and Z Fold 5 have practically zero gap, presenting a sleek premium feel when you're holding it any of these devices. I especially like the Z Fold when folded up. I'd say it's nicer than my S22 Ultra, as it can actually grip it well in my hand rather than need to stretch the hand apart. One glaring improvement is the screen brightness. It now maxes out to astonishing 1750 nits, a substantial step up from the previous 1300, which is crazy bright for a phone. I'm sure it'll hit home with many users who constantly are on the move. The real question though, how will it affect battery life? but we'll have to get our hands on a review sample first. It looks like for those who are on the fence and worried about the more fragile folding displays, Samsung is throwing in a year of Samsung Care Plus, which covers external damage as well as single screen replacement, within a year that is, which is still a nice touch. By the way, we're expecting the latest Galaxy watches, the Gen 6, to drop in any time, so make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you don't miss our detailed review. A few enhancements that caught our eye include a larger display, amped up battery, slimmer bezels, and advanced wireless guidance system. We're eager to see how they will square up against our current daily drivers, the Garmin watches. Drop a comment below with your thoughts on these new launches and let us know if there's anything specific you'd like us to cover in the forthcoming reviews. We hope you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content like this. 
We'll see you guys in the next one.